YouTube audience. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be covering all the important machine learning updates that you need to know that took place in Jan 2022. These, uh, these videos are very important because you need to be updated on what's going on in the field because that way you can know what ways AI and ML can be implemented and what the relevant um, progress going along this field is so that you can best apply it in your own uh, exp uh, field and your own journeys. As always, my LinkedIn, my YouTube and other social media will be in the description below if you would like to reach out to me alongside the slide deck for this uh, presentation that you can use to refer to it when you're studying on your own. So what, what will we be covering in this uh, video? So first we're going to be covering over uh, uh, this paper that uh, was hoping to identify potential causes of this male gaze-like phenomenon observed by the image cropping algorithms employed by Twitter, Google, and Apple. Next, we'll be looking at uh, the regulation of AI algorithms in uh, you, done by both China and New York and what implications they hold on society and why you really, really should be paying attention to this. Ne uh, the next two stories will actually be uh, us showing us fanboying over how great Emma, Facebook's AI research is. The first one, Meta AI is able to animate uh, still drawings very very well actually and the second is Facebook's few short learner which can identify potentially harmful uh, posts with only few training samples and across over a hundred languages that's amazing and finally what I think to be the most meaningful application of AI which is uh, using AI pro uh, using AI to identify proteins that can potentially kill bacteria and other things that have been causing a lot of harm as always, if you're researching a specific video topic, the time stamps are in the video description. But I would suggest you watch through the whole video just because this will cover a lot of very important topics that you should know about. So first off, we're going to talk about the uh, image cropping. So the paper I'm referring to here is called Auditing Saliency Cropping Algorithms, which looked to identify whether Twitter's image cropping was sexist and racist. So if you ever post a picture on Twitter and it's very long, what the AI will do is it will automatically uh, preview only a small section of the image and it's not going to preview the whole image. Obviously, if you click on the image, you can see the whole thing, but it, you cannot, um, it will only preview a small section of it. And this is very common. I think both Facebook, uh, uh, WhatsApp, all of these have it. So uh, what AI was trying to identify is that is this, cropping algorithm with that auto crops sexist and racist and the paper says yes um, we'll go more into this and uh, just why you should care because that's always important this is obviously a huge point of concern if you've watched any of my other videos uh, I talk a lot about how human bias can really seep into your data sets and this can cause huge problems when you start working with data because you won't even be able to see where uh, the bias is because ML can often be very black box. So ad identifying potential sources of bias is very, very important when we work with data. And, you know, so you, I've always stressed this and you can read my older articles, read my, watch my older videos where I talk about how this is a field that you will that will be very big in the future, much bigger than it is now, and you can make a lot of money with this. And it, this is a very valuable contribution to AI if you can start learning how to identify bias, where AI is failing, etc. <coughs> However, in this in the case of this particular paper, I think this really shows you how uh, populism and this always bid for trying to uh, make a AI research popular is kind of uh, leading to si situations where things aren't always necessarily very straightforward and honest. So if you will notice my title, I say the male gaze like. So if you're not familiar with the concept first, let's talk about what the male gaze is. The male gaze was a phenomenon uh, coined by some researchers in the 1960s or 70s, where they noticed that a lot of visual media was uh, catered towards the preferences of men and it was meant to make the visual, visual things happy, even if it didn't normally make sense. Look at uh, all these anime where we have female warriors or superheroes where we have female warriors. And for some reason, their armor always shows off their cleavage and their, uh, and their legs, etc. All the sexualized areas. And this obviously has no practical purpose because armor should cover your whole body. But this is done because um, this is being done in order to cater to male fantasies and male 
pleasure and that's the basic idea behind mail gaze and what the what they were concerned about this paper is that if you look at twitter's algorithm it seems to be honing in and focusing on these women's bodies instead of their faces so they were worried that mail gaze through um, had the bias had kind of crept in because remember most people working in tech are males and so maybe the data sets they used etc cetera, etc cetera, they didn't realize this but mail gaze had crept in through to the ai algorithms and maybe more through feedback etc that had resulted in ai focusing on the women's bodies and not a cropping so this is what they coined as the mail gaze like but here's what i don't like about this paper and why this is such a huge problem for ai in general and this is in fact such a big problem that i have dropped the paper i was annotating and researching for this week and i will actually be breaking down this paper and its implications uh in my medium so make sure you're following me there if you want to learn more about this specific paper but what what these researchers found is that this is not actually focusing on the women's bodies at all it's actually focusing on the uh, ca- uh the logos of companies in the background and that's how it's cropping it's just cropping to see which logos are most important so it's not really male gaze as much as it is capitalism gaze if you will and this is a uh, but and the pa- and the authors of this paper acknowledge that but they refuse to they refuse to change their wording they don't say anything about it they they kind of leave it there and then they instead of you saying male gaze it's not male gaze it's uh, they say male gaze like so that they have some deniability if you were to say hey you're misrepresenting this they'll just say oh look if you read the paper if you read the read the experiments we clearly say that this uh, focuses on that but if you read that abstract you know it, they bold out oh it really does exhibit biases and that's uh, to me that is just bad faith research that's his bad faith promotion because they're they're promoting something that's not necessarily accurate and they know it and this this is really similar to clickbait on youtube so th- this is why i'm not a huge fan of this but um this is definitely an important area that you should be focused on bias in ai bias in research and that's definitely a very valuable area for the future so next we'll be talking about china's and new york's uh, new york state's uh, regulations of algorithms so first off let's talk with, start with china china pushed out new regulations that says that the algorithm recommendation service providers think of things like youtube which recommends videos facebook which recommends posts you know instagram which recommends posts or whatever these are all recommendation providers and what uh, china is trying to do is it's trying to get them to regulate in such a way that the technology is not used to sp- engage in illegal activities spread mis- misinformation or any such other, any other measures that might be considered as harmful online content and you might be thinking that's a great thing you know there's so many studies that have been linked to social media promoting adhd promoting anxiety it's it's terrible for your mental health especially overuse of it and um, all of that so you might be thinking that's great uh, and to a certain extent you know i can certainly see the reason for it because china has been uh, f- grappling a lot with younger generations being addicted to the social media and video games so this is china's attempt to stop it however the second part and what i find very important interesting is their uh, statement that they will expect service providers to spread positive energy and promote values and this is a very interesting uh statement obviously because it's very generic it doesn't mean anything there is no legally uh legal definition of what positive energy and promotion of values is and this del- deliberate ambiguity obviously uh, has some potentially bad consequences especially when you think back to china and how powerful the government is there for example you could see the government hauling in tech uh, big tech giants and trying them on very arbitrary cases where they were possibly challenging government pa- power by saying that this does not spread positive energy and does not promote values and such a regulation is obviously going to be potentially harmful and now now let's talk about the second part of this second regulations that we'll be covering which is new york state which is uh, passing <coughs> excuse me which is passing a law that says that uh, job employers will not be able to use ai in job applicant screening so right now if you apply to a job 
what will happen is that a, an AI will parse through your resume and if it thinks your resume is good for the job, it will pass it along to HR who will further communicate with you. However, uh, what New York State is worried about and a lot of people are worried about is maybe this when this is parsing through the resume, this is going through human bias again. We're coming back to bias and this is valuable. And in this case, I can definitely see the argument where maybe it's picking up the name, maybe it's picking up certain things, maybe it's picking up certain w phrases that might might be more pertinent to one group of people over another. So it's basically, instead of um, uh, by, uh, parsing through and uh, rejecting people on jobs, uh, on merits, it's rejecting people on other cases. And they're worried that this might be, you know, because it's uh, designed by humans, because it might have human bias, it might have be uh, racial or other kinds of uh, bad discrimination that we don't want. So New York State is trying to uh, pass a law to stop this. And how will you stop this? If a comp employer chooses to use an AI for the um, for their applicant parsing, what they will have to do is they will have to make sure uh, get this AI judged for by fairness. So the people will judge this AI and see that it doesn't fall prey to any such potential biases. And they will have to, um, the AI will have to flag, okay, these are the things, reasons why I am liking this person. These are the reasons I don't like this person. So you might have more transparency as to what goes on when the AI selects or denies. And that will give you a better, clearer understanding of what's going on. And both of these, uh, both China's and New York State's regulations really go to show you one thing, which is that AI, especially when it starts impacting people in their everyday, there is a lot of uh, mechanics and moving parts to AI that are way beyond the, just the technical. And if you're trying to get into AI, if you're trying to work with it, this is something that you should always keep in the back of your mind. That's what I try to stress to my videos, to always learn about context, to learn about different data, to why you should always be trying to educate yourself with uh, the knowledge, etc. That's why I do this whole series of covering ML news, which is that I want you to understand that AI is a tool and it's being implemented in a lot of places across a lot of contexts. And your ability to understand these contexts, understand these places, understand what's going on, your ability to foresee problems that you can run into will be very, very good. Because remember, once you build a solution and then you have to tear it down later, that's a lot of extra costs. It's much, much cheaper in the long run for you to just take two, three extra months building a good solution that can that's handling all these unforeseen consequences rather than having to rebuild or, or later so uh, on that note make sure, if this video has been helpful to you so far make sure you hit the like button so other people on youtube can also learn and be educated about ai and i can get more social media fame next we're going to talk about uh, meta ai's children's drawings animations and i've linked this video so you can check it out for yourself later but it's really, really impressive what they do. So what Meta AI has been able to do is they can take a children's drawing and then they take it as an input and the AI automatically animates it in a variety of playful ways. And this AI is obviously geared towards children. And if you look at a lot of the comments, uh, like I did when I was researching this tool, it seems like a lot of teachers are very excited because they'll be able to educate a lot of young children with it. They were talking about, oh, we can use it here, we can use it there, which is always great to see. But I think... Meta is also flexing its um, how close it can be to a metaverse or a, a very early version of a metaverse right now because a lot of what Mark Zuckerberg stressed on the metaverse thing was the personalization that you can pick your own characters and you can really start interacting in ways that are not currently possible on the internet. This is possibly one such way where you can have characters, you can custom design your characters in video games to be animated in certain ways and have all these dance competitions, etc. I'm just coming off the top of my head, but uh, this application of AI is really jazz well with what they're trying to do with the metaverse, and that's why I was covering this. And obviously it's technically impressive. Let's see if this can load up here. So we're just gonna mute it. I wonder, okay, is that it? So you can see that person is taking their character that's done the speed, playback speed up to 2x by the way what speed do you guys listen to because i've moved way beyond 2x and people think i'm weird because i always watch things on like 3x or 5x and everybody else looks at me like i'm some kind of a weirdo so here you can see that it animated all those images 
your character can wave it can dance all of this and it's all being done through static images which is what's so impressive all right next we're going to cover why can't i okay yes perfect so moving on to another facebook post seems like this month facebook ai has been very active last year it was maybe microsoft maybe this year facebook will be our uh, your machine learning company of the year here we see that uh, facebook's new post uh, i've linked this in the slides if you want to read it i'll have the link in the video description as well was a pure demonstration of technical brilliance a common problem when we're working with social media sites and any place where we have large amounts of info people gathering is that it can be very hard to catch bad content one because it can be very subtly worded i can word it in pictures uh, or it might be in another language it doesn't have to be english and traditionally ai has had to have a lot of training resources a lot of investment put in to be able to catch these things and facebook was like you know what we're we're the biggest and we hope to continue to be the biggest so what can we do to stay way ahead of the competition and they came up with a few short learning approach which can learn from harmful content so if you get if you start identifying new possible kinds of harmful content suppose i came up with the rumor tomorrow chinese people like beating grandmas with bats you know that's not a rumor that's ever existed before and i came up with this on the fl a fly in this video so imagine i put this up and normal training videos normal uh, identifiers would probably require a lot more training uh, this rumor to really really spread before it, they were able to catch it with few short learners you they'll require very few training data so instead of months of data it'll only require weeks of data which is a huge step up and not only does it work across english but it will work across 100 languages think about this so the possibility of catching harmful data is going to be fantastic and that's uh, that's something that we can look forward to that's a very good demonstration of technical brilliance my only concern with this is as ai and ml get stronger it's obviously going to increase more risk for censorship etc and it's a very fine line you want to walk facebook is a private platform so they can do whatever they want but you always want to keep this in mind that okay what happens when the wrong people get involved and like just two three jokers start flagging things that they don't agree with as potentially dangerous and then your ml is so good so quick that starts tagging everything related to that is potentially dangerous that's a uh, always a thing you want to be careful about and that's once again why i what i'm stressing to you remember there is much more to ai than that's just the technical models the data etc there is a human element there is a social element to ai that you should always have in the back of your mind when working with things and you should at least you should get into the habit of considering these things and it will help you technically when you're designing things because you will be able to identify use cases and uh, real life implementations much much better once you start considering all these different aspects moving on to what is to me the most meaningful application of ai that i've seen in this uh, today's video and this might partially be because if you know anything about me you'll know that i got my machine learning journey started by working on a patent for an algorithm that can detect parkinson's disease using machine learning so i've always had a soft spot for for medical ai specifically and here's a this is a very great application so uh, peptides are basically small chains of amino acids amino acids are the building blocks of protein which is very important in your body if you're a fitness person like me you know you'll know that you got to have your amino acids the bcaas etc to build m muscle so what they did was they fed the ai um, all the proteins in the human body and what the ai outputted was potentially proteins that can potentially be used as active bacteria and think about how great this is this is not external proteins that don't exist within you it's in internal proteins which means that if you can learn to start leveraging them to be antibacterial your health shoots through the roof and here's just a quick uh, clip after uh, uh, from the source that they had these 55 different possible uh, they had more than 55 but they took 55 very promising uh, proteins that they thought might be very helpful and they tested these against a whole bunch of different bacteria you know uh, all these latin names that i can't pronounce i if you guys know I almost failed biology so 
I'm not gonna attempt to know that I any of these but a uh, long story short what we uh, look at the last line most of these proteins were able to prevent the bacteria from replicating which means that once the bacteria get into your body how they infect you is that they become one becomes two becomes four becomes eight and then they become enough where it, they start causing hell in your body if you can stop them if you can stop them even before they have like two three uh, generations going forward that's a huge huge step to uh, your health so this is obviously great infam- great news and one that you should possibly be concerned about and that's about the end for this video hopefully you liked it such videos i hope will give you direction and machine learning will help you see different ways i'm always being used being considered and really uh, how you can use it in your journeys going forward if you're interested in this kind of video make sure you're subscribed to me so that uh, we can you're always updated on the recent machine learning research what you should know what you shouldn't know i share a lot of my content yeah so if if you'd like to support this uh, the best thing you can do for me is watch this video comment on what you would like to learn about next make sure you hit the like button share it with other friends of yours who are interested in this domain and uh, you can also connect with me across the different social media because it's very helpful to me to hear from you to get feedback from you if you'd like to support me monetarily uh, my venmo and paypal links are here they'll be in the video description down below using these links gives you access to exclusive content like annotated papers special discussions consultations etc aside from that uh, you can say yes you can reach out to me uh, i would suggest if you like this kind of a video make sure you subscribe to me following me on medium because i'm always writing articles there um and they're also very machine learning focused if you couldn't tell from the name of the url uh, connect with me on linkedin twitter and uh, media uh, instagram just because i'm sharing a lot of content there you know i come across great tutorials i put them up there if you want to talk to me i, I that's what i use special especially ig uh you know if i come across great ideas uh, i can connect people over linkedin etc so make sure you're connected with me over there and especially if you're preparing for a technical kind of a role whether it's coding whether it's ml data science software development etc uh make sure you check out my substack coding interviews made simple every week i send out a question and it's a solution the uh, is subscribing is completely free and if you want the premium version for the solutions and discussions and the community it's only it's less than half a dollar a day so it's definitely well worth the cost it's helped a lot of people out and if you're in america you know the drill make sure you use my robin hood referral link we both get a free share and there's no risk to you so that's about it thanks for watching have a good one